Thank you for staying with the Monday Report. Let's see what you're saying online and bring that up on conversation at Trevor Mbidia at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Monday Report. We're talking about reforms in the education sector. The government's failure to meet its end of the bargain, i.e. full disbursement of capitation for public schools, is quite unfortunate and can easily compromise the quality of education for our children. DRCS Majogu pushed for education to be given high priority. Okay? See what else you're saying. CBC was not priority to Kenyan education. This system needs to be re-examined. Right now, government is facing financial crisis, making implementation of this system difficult. 844 system is still better. That is from Chebunyen. Okay? Kate Besk says, head teachers and principals have a difficult balancing act when it comes to running schools. The monies arrive late. The situation is worse in day schools. Okay? See what else you're saying here. Evans Wanyela says the government should prioritize funding of schools. The main key role of the government is to provide education to its people. Okay. Peter Ndubi says CBC emphasizes digital teaching and learning, and most teachers do not have ICT skills and the necessary ICT infrastructure. The government should stop pretending on this issue. All right now, let's talk about the CBC, for example. NHS and now let's start with you on this. They are yet to table their final report, but we know that we have some insights of certain issues that they want to recommend. 2633 to remain discontinued categorization of school into county, extra county, and national. In the curriculum organization, there will be options in subjects to determine career choices. Is you either take English or Kiswahili, maths or science in any other five subjects. That then means that the 14 subjects should be reduced to about seven. Now, they'll officially table that either this week or next week. But what would you recommend? To the working task force before they even go ahead and table it? I think what I will recommend to the working task force, I know that they will maintain CBC because uh, the appointing authority is determined to have CBC proceed. But they can make CBC better. How can they make CBC better? If they can think of ways of raising funds the government and the ministry, through the ministry, raising funds to fund education, particularly CBC. CBC is practical approach, is a practical curriculum. And without funding, it is reduced to zero. It becomes worse than the 844 that we think is bad. Yeah. The issue of categorization of schools and to nationals, extra county schools, and county schools is very crucial because national schools are a shared resource. If we remove this categorization, we are going to jump into localization of our national schools. Once we localize them, they will become village properties to the exclusion of the rest of the Kenyans. A school like Alliance, for example, you saw how their area MP was speaking and saying they have CDF in their constituencies, let them put up Alliance. Not knowing that CDF has never been used to put up schools like Alliance. They have been surviving on taxpayers' money and the founding missionaries who put up these particular schools. If we remove this categorization, 90% or 70% of this country is going to suffer. Look at the traditional national schools. Mangu is in which county? Kiambu. The two alliances are in Kiambu. Uh, Precious Blood Ruta, Loreto, Nairobi School borders Kiambu and is in Nairobi. Lena School is near Nairobi. So if we remove this categorization, schools like Alliance will just become a school in the neighborhood. Mangu, the same. The people in Western will either have to be in Kamusinga or in Maseno and it will be a resource that everyone wants to scramble and go to. So we must maintain this categorization and come up with a formula that will ensure equity, even in access to national schools, to extra county schools, and to county schools. But any proposal by this task force that does not touch and yeah. emphasize on funding and human resource through Teacher Service Commission, yeah. there are proposals that will not achieve anything. We must first focus on the proposals that are funding friendly, yeah. the proposals that are friendly 
to the human resource. Let us empower universities, for example, to produce teachers who are capable yeah. to teach CBC curriculum. If we come up with a proposal like merging universities, this only compromises the quality yeah. and the quantity of teachers that we can churn out to support this particular There's country. a recommendation for universities to only teach degrees and drop the certificate and diploma it, courses. It is a wrong is recommendation. A In fact, it's long overdue. Is a I wrong recommendation. It's a wrong, wrong recommendation. Okay. Okay. Remember, yeah. in the universities, yeah. the task of choosing what to teach does not lie with the ministry, does not lie with the university council. It only comes up at the end. It lies with the university senate. So let the university senate be given the mandate to decide on which courses which university can teach. And okay. with the approval of the council, the ministry should not have a problem. Okay. You're saying this is long overdue. They're recommending, I'm, I'm, they're recommending that universities now teach degrees and drop their certificate and diploma. Again, it's, this is it's, insights it's, that we've received, but they're yet to table the final report. It's long overdue. I think we need to have an audit of ever since universities began participating in this uh, kind of business of teaching certificates, uh, two weeks courses, what has been the value add on the economy. I don't think that uh, it has added a lot of value. So we can uh, comfortably say that it was a terrible, expensive, bad experiment that should not have been allowed. <laughs> and, and universities should actually be marked very, very fast. Because you, you recommend marking Yes, yes, university. very fast. Because if you look at the way resources are even in the universities, they are highly skewed in favor of the traditional uh, six universities. So, so the new coming universities have faced a lot of challenges, whereas now the traditional universities have benefited a lot. And, and if you look at universities within Nairobi, they are now even the core that have supported the growth of the private universities because of uh, we can't even explain. I, I know the good professors at the working party, I know a number of them have spent a lot of time talking about this. But, but I'm so shocked with my brother Chesa this evening that uh, he's a mass of contradictions. On one side, he seems to be arguing for CBC, but on the other hand, he is uh, so much into what was everything wrong with 844. It is really against the spirit of CBC to again start talking about categorization of schools. Because what we need to do is to, to define the minimums of a school. Because we have some things in this country that don't deserve to be called schools at all. You really can't have the kind of facilities that you get in some of these schools and then others which are dingy and just rooms with nothing where even roofs are falling off and we are calling them schools. So I think it's important that we acknowledge that. Two, over 60% of our children attend day schools. And they also now constitute the over 60% that also score a D plus grade every year and below. And so it's a national shame that we can actually sit here and, and really uh, praise and overhype the inequality that has characterized 844, that is the so-called the traditional national schools. And, and I want to join that fray of those who are asking, when we were fixing schools in our villages, where were you? Education has to be devolved to every community. And now every community must own the school that they have. A chester should go back to his uh, local community to join with his friends that they left that primary school with to fix their local primary school and the local secondary school. This idea of their role. No, 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 it is their role. Education. It is not. Let it me is finish. Not education. It is not. Education. The, the reason why we are having these challenges today is because government has removed communities from the schools. And so what happens, communities feel disempowered, communities feel totally disengaged, and that is the reason why parents, when they are told that they can contribute towards learning of their children, they wonder. But, but, but government already told us that they were going to pay. And they are telling, let me finish, they are telling this to the children of the poor. And the children of the rich are sitting in schools and deciding to change the fees every day. So what you are doing with the policies that at the end of the day, it becomes counterproductive. And, and I'll give you another policy that has proved that uh, when you make certain policies and you are not very sensitive on the poor, they end up to be counterproductive. Take, for instance, a policy such as children should not reach school before 7 a.m. Now, such a policy will only end up affecting the schools. Okay. Now, what will happen to boarding schools? Because those students are already in those schools. So okay. the point I'm putting across is a categorization of schools must fall. Okay. And it will fall. You like it or not? Trevor, it I must have, fall I, I, because it offends everything about CPC. Okay. That's let number me, one. Let me, let, 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 let me finish. You, you, you had your yeah. time. You had your time. Number two, 
I totally agree. Yeah. I was there in 2018 and argued on the pros and the cons of decision making around CPC and looked at uh, what would go into CBC or other alternatives. Yeah. And we were very clear. When UNICEF conducted the cost-benefit analysis, I was around as the local expert. And we established the mathematics of implementing CBC. All we have asked is simple. If government is committed to us implementing CBC, let it do the right thing. Okay. It Which would is? require not less than $750 billion to implement CBC. Okay. Unfortunately, Whatever the previous regime, we are told that we should not tell people about the previous regime, but we must tell people about the previous regime. It kept on telling us, that, no, you know, those costs are one-off after which they, they are not one-off. If you are going to have children studying 14 subjects, it's yeah. not going to reduce. And that's why it's good yeah. listening to the overtones around people conversing on what is really necessary to give to our children. What does it mean? These children who just left class six last year, where capitation was 1450, they have come to junior secondary school. They are still walking to the same school. They are still using the same classroom, the same teachers. What has now changed that their fees should move from 1,450 shillings to 10,000 shillings? There is everything wrong with the configuration of our education. Okay. And it's good. And I just really hope yeah. that the presidential working party will not fall prey yeah. to the challenges that are faced at the task forces from 1909, whereby you have a bunch of recommendations in hundreds yeah. that become extremely impossible to implement. Okay. And I only have, I can only hope yeah. that there is a self-sustaining mechanism whereby some of these recommendations can be taken okay. forward. All right. It is a, it's right I, I have okay. the right of reply on a number of issues. One, I want to call the attention of my friend to Article 53 of our Constitution, which provides that every child has a right to education. To just deconstruct this article for him, this means that the free right to compulsory. education, yes. free and compulsory, right to education encompasses four things. One of them is accessibility. This means that students or children should not walk beyond particular distance to get a school. So the idea of abolishing schools that he doesn't consider schools does not arise. Number nobody, two, nobody affordability. Yeah, let me have my time. You had your time, finish. you used it wrongly. Let me use mine. Number two is uh, affordability. This places the responsibility of provision of education squarely on government. Number three is quality. That the quality of this education must be to the standards that are anticipated by the international community and relevance. Relevance takes us up to the university of education. Whether universities are offering diplomas and certificates and degrees, we should be asking the question of relevance. Are these certificates and diplomas relevant? If they are relevant to the economy, then we proceed and have them. And lastly, on the issue of merging universities, perhaps we do not understand the history of our universities. At one time, we only had the University of Nairobi as the university. And then a commission was set up after a proposal was mooted that the Kenyatta College then be turned into a second university. President Moy had to appoint a commission, the Presidential Working Committee on the Establishment of a Second University, which stated that we need to establish a, a second university in Eldoret, the current Moy University. And then we turned into changing our institutions of uh, middle, middle learning, the colleges, Egerton College became the university, uh, Seriba College and the government school, Maseno, became Maseno University, Weko in Kakamega became Masinde Muliro. We should not look at universities just as academic institutions. Let us also look at universities as to what they are able to do in transforming villages and towns for economic purposes. Okay. If you go to Kisumu today, Maseno has played a major role. Kakamega is a product of Masinde Muliro <coughs> University. Now Kaimosi, the face of Kaimosi is changing yeah. because of French school Kaimosi. If we merge these universities, we are going to kill economies around regions. It will be a bad idea. Okay, I'll I'm, give you a I'm, minute I'm, each yeah, for closing remarks. I'm, 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 I'm just so shocked yes. that you can take such a, a simplistic view of what merging universities would be. It's and, because and, I speak for the bush. Le, 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 <laughs> I speak speaking. for the common no, you're man. Not, you're not speaking for the common when, man. When I you're sit, when very, I very sit in a philosophical, view. theoretical let me, let, class, let me I'll think at that level. Let me finish. But we're now thinking with Kenyans. Today, there is nothing that stops Kenyatta University. Let, let, me, let me give you this practical example. There's no magic as to why, within yeah. the radius of 10 kilometers, 
there should be Kenyatta University, there is University of Nairobi, there is Technical University of Kenya, and then Smart Media University. There is nothing that stops that these ones can be constituent colleges okay. or even campuses for University of Nairobi. It is not going to change anything. They were before. Far. Kenyatta University was a school of education. So, so, so forget about so now can, this. We forget about this politicization. Go, we cannot go where we were in 1965. Let me, let me finish. In let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Remarks, yes. What you're saying is you can't have one university running very well. Yeah. One kilometer here and another university here is failing to benefit okay. from the advantages of that good management because you are spreading your resources thin. thin. All right. That's why it makes more sense to do what you call consolidation. Okay. I think you need to go to revisit a little bit classes on economics 101 on the importance of consolidation and where it makes sense. Okay. We'll so that you stop making this these this, this discussions a little bit too simplistic. That okay. if you remove if if you made Masindo Muliro University a campus of more university, it means that the economy of Kakamega will die. Okay. You Honestly, see, one who would have you that in, 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 in My, my one minute yes. is this. My brother wants us to take us to the Precambrian age when Masinde Mriro was a campus of Moi and KU was a campus of Nairobi. We are not going there. In my community, we even have a song to that. And, and lastly, Trevor, unfortunately, that's where you are I going finish, to, because it has not served the purpose. Finish, okay. You are going let back. Us, let us call out the Minister of Education and the government to do the right thing in the funding of education. And teachers who invigilated, who supervised KCSC 2022 are yet to be paid their dues. The same teachers are expected to supervise this year's KCSC. We are already compromising the quality of a national examination by not paying teachers their dues one year, almost one year after supervision and, uh, and uh, supervision and regulation. Yeah. May I call upon the ministry to kindly consider paying these teachers okay. before the financial year comes to an end. All right. Thank you so much for making time this evening. Emus Kaburu, Chief Counsel, Optical Group, and also an education expert, and Kennedy Achesa, legal and education expert as well on this conversation. As soon as the Presidential Working Party on Education reforms tables of official recommendations, we'll discuss them again right here. The ones we were touching on were just the ones that we know at Citizen TV that have been recommended so far. All right. Thank you so much for taking part in this conversation. My name is Trevor Mbija. On behalf of everybody else who made this possible, we say thank you. Have a good night and God bless.